Welcome to Technically Speaking from EBR's EdTech team. We invite you to join us on this podcast every other week to talk techie with us. Welcome to Technically Speaking from EBR's EdTech team, where we invite you to join us every other week on this podcast to talk techie with us. We are your hosts, Brittany Davenport. And I'm Nikki Washington, aka Techie Nikki. As always, we're going to start our show off with a little tech tea to keep you in the know of all the trending news in tech. So Nikki, what is the tea this week? Let's go to the metaverse because the metaverse has invaded our lives in 2022. So let's talk about it today. So what we've seen is a craze on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram is the Oculus 2 Quest. And especially with the adults, I feel like I've seen more videos of adults than the actual kids. Like right. We are having a great time with this device here. I mean, it is fun, Nikki. We, we played it. You know, it's, it's really fun. <laughs> So if you don't know what the Oculus Quest is, it's a standalone device that was designed for VR. So, you know, that's the new wave for technology. So it's all about VR. So you can play games, download things, have fun there. So you don't necessarily need a TV. So I think people like that. But they can, you can essentially watch what's happening uh, with the flat version, of course, of what's going on in VR. I think that's cool, too. I can still see because that kind of mimics something at um, at the arcades they have. They, the, you can, the parent can watch what the, stu- what the kid right. is experiencing. So I like that. So I think that's fun and cool. So as a parent, maybe if I want to watch what they're doing, I can make them have it on the TV as well on a flat screen so I can make sure it's appropriate and okay. So I do like that part about it, but it is like um, everything is built in. So you don't need to have a computer from the the computers built in, the Wi-Fi connection, all this stuff is a standalone package. You come with everything you need. So So, it's not anything extra that you actually need. Yes. So thinking about like on the videos we're watching and the uh, people are walking around what stops them from like walking into the the wall or running into well, the sofa with this you don't even need to put tracking sensors around the room they have it built in to track you and it oh. it has like those built-in sensors so it will prevent you and you can decide if you want to sit down because if you know you're that person <laughs> then you're gonna just do that too clumsy much. person <laughs> then you need to choose to sit down (laughs) on there but (laughs) so they do have options there but they have those built-in sensors to prevent people from it'll it'll tell you when you go out of your zone in your area is so I like that so don't have anybody walking off a cliff or anything like that (laughs) so those sensors are in there are pretty great I gotta say I tried tested it out myself and once you go out of your zone it it essentially shuts down until you get yourself back into your little area so I love that process so that is basically what the Oculus 2 is, but we want to talk about, we always tie it back to our students and, and to education, of course, because everything we, everything technology we see, we think about how can we use it in technology and tie it back to our students. So if we do have teachers that would like to use this in their classroom, we just want to let you know, please make sure you get permission. All right. From, <laughs> from parents, <laughs> your principal, your EDs, these things would have to be supervised and okay by parents because we do have to let you know if you just send these kids and give them these devices, they will run into some inappropriate things. And I'm just going to leave it there right, <laughs> that they right. may see. So <laughs> don't just let them go and explore. You may want to explore with them. And like I said, also have it display on a flat screen so you can see what they're doing because there are some adult things here that, that students could run into and there's no essential parental controls set up on there. You can't set them up. That was one of the reviews that I read a lot. And I'm, a, I'm saying one, there were a lot of the reviews <laughs> that I read on Best Buy. The parents, they loved it. They The kids love the device, but they just hate that they cannot control what their kids see and do on there. So just keep in mind with that. And if we're going to bring it to our classroom, we have to make sure that we're following the laws, keep our students protected and safe 
for these devices. And Brittany, I know you were telling me earlier that it, it recommends a certain age for students to use this device. Right. So even though it looks really kind of kitty, kind of looks cartoonish, but the Oculus spokespeople have been real transparent in saying that it um, is not this experience is just not for children under the age of 13. But of course, that is completely up to the parents discretion. But the people over at Oculus have said and over and over again that it is not recommended for um, kids under the age of 13. Um, there's no physical reminder to tell them to take that headset off. And you know that some kids, they might put this on and they will never take it off. And that is um, that's, that's something that, that the company just does not recommend at all. And of course, as with anything, you should monitor your, your child when they're on technology. If they're saying, you know, their eyes are blurry or getting headaches, then we may need to lower the amount of screen time and things like that. And definitely don't ignore it. Check on it because everybody has a different reaction to these different technology devices. So we always want to not ignore that. And we always want to respect taking some time away, even though we love technology, <laughs> removing right. ourselves from it. For a little bit, sometimes it's it's a plus as well. But just wanted to talk about the Oculus Plus today and how it's invaded our our lives, especially adults on the internet. It's, <laughs> it has completely taken over. If you've never gotten to experience it, we suggest that you experience it. It is a cool feature. I had a great time, but I gotta say, it can be addicting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like another now, reason. I, I another get back reason on why they don't want those kids to get on it, because you know those kids can get really, really, really addicted to those types of things. And you know, big kids, kids of all ages, we uh, we don't want to get addicted to this type of thing. So um, that's it for our tech tea of this week. But of course, we will be coming back in to tell you about more trending tech as we come across it and keep you up to date in all of the um, all of the technology that has been invading and will invade our lives. So you guys are going to move into our main topic. So stay tuned in. All right. So now let's get into our tech test taking tips. <laughs> Say that five times fast. So Nikki, do you have any tech test taking tips for our listeners? Yes, and I will not try to say that five <laughs> times. <laughs> I'm going to leave it for you. But yes, as a former teacher who always taught the testing grades, I have a lot of tips. How much time do we have today? <laughs> <laughs> so high, high stakes testing, I know it's a struggle. We hate when it comes because our ki- we are on lockdown. We are miserable. We just hate it there at that time because we- everything is focused on testing, unfortunately. So it's not a fan favorite for us or our kids. So we get it. We understand. But there's ways that teachers could, you know, make this a little bit easier for parents and students and even themselves by doing just some basic things so that you don't burn yourself out or your learners during this time. Because, I know like it may be February, March, everybody goes into test mode. Okay, we're not doing anything. We're going into test mode. That's just how it is. (laughs) And we hate it. We hate it. I know as a teacher, I really didn't follow that motto. Just per it's personal. I just didn't do it. I just continued to teach as I normally did and incorporated things throughout the year. That way, when testing came, it wasn't a big deal for me or my students because we were already prepared. So let's go through some tips that me and Ms. Davenport want to share with you guys so that you can make sure that your learners are successful. No one is stressed out. You don't have any anxiety during testing. So our number one tip, make sure your students are prepared for the online test formats. Right, Brittany? Right. Because I think, what is it, fourth grade is starting to um, test online this year. So some of the third grades we have in EBR now in other places, we have like six uh, six or five third grade students that will do the pilot this year for online testing as oh, well wow. in our district. So next year, third grade will be fully online. So that's different. It's getting yeah. younger and younger with the online testing. All right. So it's so, a good thing that they have so many of those online programs that have those test taking um, tools right there embedded into their lessons. And we'll get into that later, you guys. We'll tell you some of the tools that we suggest to help 
make sure your students are prepared for the online test because those days with, with having those number two pencils, they have actually come <laughs> and go. I know we used to remember, y'all yeah, remember, I know I, it's so long ago because I taught fifth grade, we was always online. I, we don't have to sharpen pencils <laughs> as much. Of course, they still had to take uh, their scratch paper or not. But my kids, they really didn't use those pencils. I didn't have to sharpen them a million times during the test. So that transition from going from paper-based to computerized, it is a transition. Even though we feel like our students are, you know, they are born with technology, there's just still they certain still have things. to be trained. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. you can't just we can't just assume that they know just because they are born with those iPads in their hands. And the one more thing I want to say about this before we move on to the next tip, you don't have to teach them in isolation how to use the tech enhanced items that they will face on their test. You can incorporate this throughout your daily, uh, your weekly test and your daily teaching and learning in your classroom. So don't ever feel like this is something extra that you have to do that's going to take your instruction time. Think about not teaching in isolation and incorporating it into your daily learning for your students. That's what I did in my classroom. Right. And it's not too late to start right now because they still have about what, about five or six weeks before testing. So if you start now, those students will be ready by the time they start taking their test, even if you didn't start way back in August. And trust me, do that because your students will feel comfortable they won't feel anxiety, stressed out about the test. They, I've seen it with my own eyes. They're just so much more comfortable when they've had the opportunity to explore, play around with those tools. It's no pressure on them. So definitely please take, that's why we put that as our number one tip, because it's something important. You can't take for granted that the students will know everything. Make sure you cover it to the T. So there's no question. Because remember, during the test, you can't answer that question. So just keep that right. in mind. All right, so let's go to our second tip. So the second tip is to make sure that you are benchmarking your learners. So um, I think we in EBR, we have been benchmarking. We have our interim test. We've been doing this. So your students have been being benchmarked, assessed. They are kind of familiar with what they need. And you know what gaps they have and how to keep them, how to get them ready for that test that's coming up in April. So make sure that you are going through that data, looking at those gaps that your students might have, and figuring out little small ways to kind of incorporate that into your daily teaching so that you can get those students prepared for that test. Have those little um, Nearpy lessons or maybe a a little short um, Kahoot on specific skills and just to, to keep it fresh in their brains because we can't teach in isolation. We have to make sure that we are tying all these standards and skills all together. And Brittany, we got to say, I like you said that to benchmark our learners, because we can't forget we've been going through a pandemic. Some students haven't had a normal education since they started. So we do have to close those gaps and provide that instruction for them before these high stakes tests come up. So just keep that in mind. And we can speak on this because y'all probably like we this technology telling us this. So (laughs) we can speak on this because we are certified teachers. We have taught, we have been through this. So we can just speak on our experiences and give you advice. So we just want to always let you guys know tech and Integration. We are we consist of certified teachers that have taught in the classroom. We have been through this, so we're not just giving you smoke. We, right. we actually have done this thing. So, and these were this. things that have, that have worked for us, and we were successful in our classrooms with. So, our se- our third tip: you just gotta have to practice, practice, practice. Go over these tech and enhi- enhanced items. Make sure that the students know it. Make sure that they understand it. But you don't have to say, let's practice for the leap test. You don't have to tell them that. Right. I, I never really mentioned the leap test. We we just working. We make it normal for them. Like it's a normal thing that we're gonna do. And we know practice makes perfect. It does. It does. If you if you practice, 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 it does make it make perfect. But does will every student in your classroom be perfect during the test and make a perfect score? No. But as long as you've done your best, you've worked with your students, you provide any additional resources and um, sessions with your students and you've done all you can. That's it. But as a teacher, I can just create 
fun activities such as games, writing activities, exercises to help my students extend their learning. As long as I've done those things, any additional support, I've made sure I maybe I even taught tutoring or provide tutoring for my students or on the weekend help with some of my parents. Those are the type of things that we're saying just to make sure that the students are prepared. We can, as teachers, we can only do what we can do. We only have so much time. We understand that we get that. So just do what you can do within your time to help with your students to learn, catch up on anything that they may have missed. This is a great time to close those gaps on things that they have missed, like rounding. Rounding was, I was going to speak on math. Rounding was <laughs> always a problem. It's like... I did, no matter how I taught it, some of them, a lot of them, I'll say some, a lot of them just didn't get it. So I used to use that opportunity to go back and teach those tough topics that I, that I wanted fresh in their mind that they didn't get are those standards that I know are those ones that those heavy hitters, I would use that time to go back and, um, you know, review that for my students. So take that in mind as well. Let's move on to number four. All right, moving on to number four. Let parents help. You do not have to take this on and do it all by yourselves. Let parents help. Let older siblings help. Let those aunts and uncles help. Let those children take advantage of those opportunities at home. So we know that parent involvement is a big, big, big thing in students' academic success. So this is all, it also um, pertains to assessments. Make sure that you send home those little um homework helpers like with Eureka, because me and Nikki are both math teachers. So we always go back to math, but send home. Those, sorry. <laughs> right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But math is like, that's all I can rely. I can fall back on, but send home those little Eureka homework helpers for your, um, your math students, send home little near pie lessons. So if your students have devices at home, create a little self-paced near pie lesson and let them actually practice at home. Um, Kahoot quizzes, all of those things. You can get that data, that fresh data coming straight to you um, as soon as they do it at home. And your students might think it's like a game, like a little competition, but they are actually practicing and getting ready for that test. So take advantage of any opportunity that you can to let your parents and your families help get these students ready for the assessments. And let's move on to five. This is this is big, y'all. I, I swear by it. It works. Create a positive culture for your students. Build them up. I, to be honest, I knew I had some students that maybe wouldn't do so good, but I had built them up so strong, <laughs> made them so confident. Right. They actually, like, it's a mindset. You have to set that mindset for your for yourself because at the beginning of the year, I know when you're looking at your data, you're like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to get them to here at the end? It's a mindset. You have to even tell yourself, I can do this. I can do this. I'm great. I can do this. I'm a good teacher. And you have to do the same things for your students. Put it in their mind that there are great students. They can do this. They can make a mastery. They are advanced. They have this. Put that in their mind. And I promise you, they can get it done. Growth mindset works. I am a living testimony of it. I always worked in the inner city and I had kids starting with very low scores. And by the end of the school year, they were mastery, advanced, or even basic. I'll take that because you came from where you were to you went at least two, you grew, grew at least two steps. So I can't be mad at that. But motivating them, giving the students the confidence that they need. It really helps them when taking these high stakes testing because they go in feeling confident. And you know what happens when you feel confident as an adult, when you feel confident and you go and do something, you're going to be great at it. So do the same thing with your students. I promise you it'll work with helping with LEAP testing or any high stakes testing. Give them that growth mindset that they can achieve this test. Right. And then our last thing, which is another one that doesn't really deal with tech, but we can incorporate tech into it, is to keep your students moving. Exercise is one of the biggest stress relievers. So you need to incorporate that regular movement into your review sessions so that it can improve your students' retention. So again, I'm going to go back to math. So we have that flu <laughs> those fluency activities that we would do in class. So the students would do it on paper, but then we would incorporate that movement in between. They would stand up and they would punch or they would jump or do jumping jacks just to kind of keep them moving, let that blood flow, let them um, stretch it out. Like 
just relieve that stress, that redundancy of sitting down at the desk, working on the computer or working on paper, let them get up and move around. It, it can alleviate that pressure. Um, you can have them on testing day. We also did this. So when test monitors are the administration would pass by my class on testing day, they would just kind of laugh because before the test, when everybody else was just kind of like sitting there, my class was up, we were stretching, we were punching, we were doing all types of things, jumping jacks, just to get that blood flowing and get those students ready for, um, for the test. Because uh, like I said, exercise is one of the best stress relievers. So Brittany, <laughs> let's get into what they're really here for, technology. How can I use technology to help practice with my students for the lead test and prepare them better to make sure there's no stress or test anxiety when that day arrives. Okay, so one of the my favorites is Nearpod. I've been using Nearpod. I have been using Nearpod in my class for years. Nearpod to me is one of the most collaborative and um, it gives the, the data that you need so that you can make sure that your students are where they need to be. So some great things in Nearpod is time to climb because I know even me as an adult, I love when I see that that little hill and I and I hear the music and I'm ready <laughs> for that time to climb. And I know my students were the exact same way. They loved a time to climb. So time to climb, you can put in those test prep questions, those um, A, B, C, D. You can put those questions in, let the students compete to climb that mountain. So they, they're playing a game, but you're getting that data that you need to make sure that the students are where they need to be. And a side note, Brittany, they've made a little update to Time to Climb. Oh, so yeah, you yeah. can change those backgrounds and themes now. So you have really more options to make take this really to the next level with your students. And I think they even have multi-select now on Time to Climb, which is a game changer. Um, there's also the collaborative board. So that's not really like test taking, but you get to have that collaboration with the students and the students get to see and hear what um, their classmates think about a topic or get those ideas so that they can take them and make it their own. So I love a collaborative board. They have the normal, just the quiz. And remember on Nearpod, we can always take a quiz and convert it to a time to climb. Again, a fan favorite. And there's also activity banks within Nearpod where teachers can go in and quickly grab pre-made and standards aligned matching pairs, um, draw it, and those fan favorite time to climbs. And they can customize it to fit the needs of their students. So Nearpod is one of the best, in my opinion, test taking um, strategies or test taking preparation help me out Nikki what is it is it one of the best tools, <laughs> tools <laughs> that <yes>. we can <laughs> use <laughs> and also they have even um they have a section just dedicated to test taking skills to review they have that dedicated just for test taking to go over those skills that the learners would need for the particular grades so definitely check that out like Brittany said and it changes the mood for your learners because I even used to get tired of looking at that leap practice packet. Yes. I was like over it. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> so I'm not I know making copies. <laughs> yeah. So it just gives you an opportunity to change, even though you're still using the same material, just gives you another way to present the material, another fun, interactive way so that we don't burn the students out. Because remember, you don't want to burn the students out on testing and then the day it comes, they're just like over it and they're marking anything down. So we wanna always be careful with that. So we wanna find fun, interactive, engaging ways to actually prepare our students for testing. That's why we have Nearpod number one on our list. All right, and also within Nearpod, if you go to the district library, that online tools training that um, the EdTech team has provided, that's there in your district uh, library. So if you go to the district library and go to technology trainings, the online tools training for your students that's taking this test online is right there. And if you need any help with that, just find um, your district technology facilitator. They'll be happy to come in and assist you with it. Let your students practice that. You can put it in your Google Classrooms as like a self-paced, student-paced lesson, and they can just go in as an early finisher activity and just kind of play around with those tools so that on the day of the test, they're not playing around with those tools. So let them get familiar with the highlighter 
and the um, magnifier and the sticky notes. Let them get familiar with that now so that on the testing day or the testing week, they're not playing around with them and they know what they are used for and it, they know how to use them to make sure that they are doing the best that they can on their tests. Yes, ma'am. All right. Our next tool that we would like to talk about is another district supported tool that can actually help change how you're going to present this information to your students instead of that traditional lead packet. We have Cami, you guys. Are you guys using Cami? You should be. <laughs> uh, Cami <laughs> is a great resource. It, you can add media to Cami. You can insert videos. You can, it's like a Google doc, a live Google document. You can share with your students. You can all collaborate on the document. So in my mind, I'm when I was thinking about Cami and how I would use this for test prep, if I was still in the classroom, I may put my students in groups and assign different problems to them, let them collaborate on it. They can add their media videos of and explanations of how they did it. And then the class, we can respond with voice comments or comments just to change up the scenario of just having a leak packet, make it fun and engaging. And you can actually do that with Cami. And of course, Cami has the drawing tool for math and the equations. You, so it's it's great for math teachers. I always got to go back to math. Hey, sorry, because they always <laughs> leave us out. We don't always have our equation builder and things there. But Cami, it fits all teachers, even math teachers. So it's a great resource to use. And then they have, you can capture, uh, talk through the process of solving problems. So there's just great things that you can do with Cami with that leap packet. You can easily upload that leap packet as a PDF and transform it into a different type of LEAP practice there. And I'm sure your students will appreciate that because remember, they can also insert text, text boxes. They can mark up things, highlight, strike out, what you want them to do, because those are things that we taught them right on when they're taking the test. I want you to mark up this document, cross out things, highlight things, underline text. They can still practice all of that with Cami. So I love the fact of using Cami as another way to prep our students and to make it more engaging and interactive for our students. And also you can even grade kid quizzes by using your voice, video screen capture to leave comments. How cool is that? Rather than the student just looking at the grade and wondering, well, I missed this one. You as a teacher or maybe your student leaders could leave a voice video and even mark up the document and explain. And then they always have that there. So I love that as well. Right. So those are some awesome things that you can do with that traditional leap packet. You can download those leap package practice packets from the uh, state department uploaded right in Cami. Mark them up. Make this way more engaging. Just having that regular packet, but you're still doing what? Leap practice, right? You, right? You're just making it a little bit more fun. Yep. So so far, we've talked about Nearpod and Cami. So with that being said, we just want you to keep in mind: don't take for granted that we our students are digital natives and they know how to use digital tools incorporate as much digital resources as you can before the leap test so they're ready so i hope we gave you some great ideas so far about nearpod and cami we're going to talk about edge elastic for just a moment now so edge elastic i know when i was teaching i used edge elastic for all of my tests i did all of my formative tests, all my formative assessments, they were all done through Edge Elastic. I know that this year we're not really using Edge Elastic in that capacity, but you still can use Edge Elastic to prepare your students for your LEAP test. So we will link at the bottom of our, in our show notes about how you can go to Edge Elastic and have your students to practice um, online assessments. So students can go in and they can get familiar with using a computer to take the real exam. So if you go to the link that we will provide down below, they will have um, leap practice tests all the way from third grade up to some high school. So I think they have like algebra one and they have some biology tests. All of those are leap 2025 practice tests. So I know when elementary up to middle school, you can go in and you can have them take the each one of the subjects. So you have the math practice test, they have ELA, social studies, science, have them go in, assign that to them. This could also be something that you are sending home with your students that to have that home connection, have them send, go home, work on this, come back to class and you can kind of see where the gaps are, where the gaps lie and help those students so that they are fully prepared to take that test out in April. So 
make sure you check out that Edgelastic link that we will provide in our show notes. And I just want to add one more point. You guys, those these tests, the practice tests that are here are straight from the Department of Ed- Louisiana Department of Education. Right. So these are vetted practice tests that you are able to use. So just keep it. I know because some people are concerned about that and you should be. But this is from the State Department. So you are fine. Yes. All right. So we don't want to leave out our littles. I know our littles are not actually taking a leap test, right? But, but they, they will still be need doing to be testing. prepared. Yes. <laughs> and they'll be doing some type of benchmark testing. They have to test out at the end as well to, you know, so the teacher can assess them as well. So there are some things that even our little teachers could do to help prepare and not burn those children out. Let's bring back an oldie but a goodie. It's called Plickers. Do you Ooh. guys remember Plickers? I love Plickers. And it has a makeover. I got, I have to say, I like the makeover. It has, it's gotten a makeover. You can do some wonderful things here. You can provide fun for your learners while learning. And it's perfect for little teachers because I know you guys may not have devices for all of your students or they may even struggle with the devices. So it's great. Or even, I'm not going to even say just for littles, if you want to give your students a break from looking at the technology, because right. looking at technology all day could affect your vision, give you a headache. Sometimes you do need a break. You have to take a break, right? So Plickers is for that. So we, our littles can use it. Our older students could use it if you want to give that break. The only person who would need a device would be the teacher. You will have the questions on the screen. You can use like an iPad or an Android. Nothing wrong with those Android <laughs> <laughs> or your iPhone and scan the students' cards. And we'll put a little quick video and link for you in the in our description so that you can check it out. But it has full K through 12 support, math and science support. You're able to take your questions and bring them to life with embedding YouTube. You can add GIFs. You can now add audio. And you can use anything as your for your answer choices, such as images, sounds, videos, GIFs, and equations. So they really have went from just a very simple platform and I guess they've changed, you know, for the pandemic and made some great additions. And it's still free, even though you can upgrade to a premium account. The basic of what you need is still free. So this is a suggestion as well. So I just wanted to give you some options to use for testing prep, because we know everyone, when it comes to this point, everybody is over test prep. Me as a parent, I'm over it because I see my son (laughs) with a leak packet every night he's working on. I'm over testing. So I know the parents are over testing the students, the teachers, we're all over testing. And once testing is over, we just all fall on our face because it's been stressful, right? So let's just come up with ways to make it more fun and engaging for our students because we don't want anyone to burn out, even you as teachers. So let's just decide on what ways we will like to use to actually make this a little bit funner for us as well, not just the students for us. You know, it's miserable for us to sit there and go through a leak packet on right. the, on the desk too. So and we want to find it any way that something will grade it for us. So check out some of these resources because some of these resources will grade those things for us and give us that data, make things a little bit easier for us. So we hope you have found at least one thing that we've talked about today that you will start incorporating with your students. Um, The the last thing I just want to say is make sure that you are building that confidence. We talked about that earlier, but just make sure that we can do all the test prep we want to We can give them all the packets. We can give them all the tools. But you just have to make sure that you go back to just building that confidence, just telling those students that you know that they can do it and actually believing that they can do it. Um, Like Nikki said earlier, that growth mindset, that's a real thing. If you tell yourself you can do something, eventually you will actually do that thing. So make sure that you are going in each day with a smile on your face, even if it's a fake smile, just go in with that (laughs) smile on your face and tell your students that they are ready and you tell yourself that you are ready. All right, we, you guys have a great testing season. We are always here to support you if you need any support. We are signing out. So thanks for tuning in for another episode. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.